Welcome back. I'm Alfred Lamarant Weber, and I'm here surrounded by extraordinary justice and extraordinary determination and accomplishment in the personae of Laura Eisenhower and Patty Greer. Welcome, Laura and Patty. Thank you, Alfred. Thank you. Now, uh, we're here today in part one of a two-part program. Each part is about 60 minutes long, and part one is an introduction uh, to the evidence that we'll be showing in part two. And the reason why we're going through this meticulousness grows out of, uh, grows out of experience, wisdom, and uh, care and consideration for the real subjects of this uh, program, the, the human beings and families of the employees of Gaia.com, a communications corporation in Colorado founded in 1988 by one Jerka Risavi who came from Czechoslovakia, which as you know, in 1968, ceased from a communist country, but then was taken over by the communists through the electoral process and has had a large part of communist infiltration into the United States, particularly in areas of office supplies and communication, which is Jerka Risavi's specialty. And so uh, our first two articles, uh, Exposing Gaia.com and Jerka Risavi and its sponsored conferences, which resulted in deaths, disabilities, and severe injuries to person from military grade directed energy weapons. Uh, have had far-reaching consequences. And they've had such because they've been accompanied by evidence, not innuendo, not accusation, but by solid evidence gathered by hundreds of people who have written in to put this together. And in that same spirit, we're going to learn today an amazing program of how the employees at Gaia.com a corporation headed up by now, by independent witness, a known Satanist from a, I don't know if he's a GRU, Soviet communist agent, but it's sure close to it. He came breezed into Boulder the year after Mary Houston and I did the Harmonic Convergence radio program on NPR satellite with Jose Arguez that even the Washington Post interviewed us. And then the communist Satanists hit town and boy, it's been really bad ever since. Now, with that introduction, I'm gonna turn this story over to Patty Greer. And for our Greek chorus, we have Laura Eisenhower. Welcome, Laura. Please feel free to intervene and to comment um, as you see fit. I'm gonna recede into the background, put myself on mute and occasionally pipe up. But thank you very much, Patty. Thank you very much, Laura. And thank you very much, em employees of Gaia. Jim, uh, people are questioning the whole Q thing. They say, oh, Q is just inside, you know. Well, you judge for yourself. That's why we're bringing you today the first hour, the summary, and the second hour, all the, the letters, so you can see that they're from plain folks. They're not from Q in some, you know, Langley, Virginia cubicle. Cubicle! Oh, it's Q from the cubicle. Gee, I never thought about that one. Let me shut up here. I'm too much of a Gemini. And turn it over to you guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What a great way to get us to start smiling. And um, what's happening now is that humanity, I think, is finally winning the war because 
people like the three of us are sitting together and having conscientious conversations and trading information. And the three of us hold really different positions. And equally important is for Laura, who is friends with all the speakers still, because she is the last woman standing and going to these events and speaking. Uh, there might be a few others, but she's the only one I can say I've noticed in a long time up there with the big boys like I used to be for a few years. But I never got chummy with them uh, because uh, for some reason, um, maybe I'm not tall enough, but whatever it is, I didn't get chummy with the boys and um, Laura has been. And um, so she knows on a personal level where David and Corey roll uh, far more than I do. And uh, I only met David once, and it was a remarkable first meeting. I was in a restaurant on a date, and um, the three of us, my date and I in the corner, and David four tables away, stayed long enough till they were mopping the floors and putting the chairs on the table. And I finally just went, hey, David, and he turned around, Patty, how are you? And my date was like, you know, David Wilcock. I thought it was one thing to be with a crop circle girl. And so I was like, okay, so this won't be rude if he comes over. Seven hours later, we stopped talking. That was the first time I met David. And the only thing I remember was blowing his mind with what I knew and having him tell me why they changed their name. And now all these bits and pieces are coming together like a puzzle. And I live in friggin' Boulder, Colorado. I've been here 47 years. So it really sucks that everywhere I go, I meet somebody that knows the people that work, that run, that all these things. You know, I built this house, I plumbed it, I wired it. It's like, leave me alone, I don't want to know. But in the last year or two, I keep meeting all the Drumvelo people. And, um, as I've gone public, and all I said was, my movies are locked up, this really sucks, and somebody, gosh, I wonder who, is spending a ton of money hiding my films on Amazon, Vimeo, YouTube, and then Small Detective, a third grader, could have done it. I connected all these problems to people that I knew that worked at the corporation hiding my films. And I want to do a brief disclaimer before I say much more, which is that... Um, I didn't write any of the posts from the GEM group. I don't know who's, who, who they are. I know that a lot of employees are very upset there, but I don't know who the contact is that started writing to me. And um, what people don't know that's going to be a surprise in this show is that here I am, the one that has been... I just pulled myself out of doing conferences because I've been hit three times with the directed energy weapon at, these, at the Contact in the Desert event in uh, uh, Joshua Tree, where they used to be. And I won't go into the story of why they had to move, but I do want to remind myself of what blew David's mind in our seven hours was in this long document. And we were trading data back and forth, so his deep intel, sometimes this girl's like me. So the biggest one where he sat back and looked at me and said, where'd you get that? Nobody knows that. Was that the CEO, and that's all I'm going to call him now, paid Drumvelo $3 million 35 years ago for his data, for his research, for his sacred geometry science. And... Um, that really threw David like nobody knows, like it was some big deal, which, okay. I mean, it's in a document you put out to the public, Alfred, called Sinister Forces Target Ufologists. I mean, you, you went public with it, and it says it right there. Um, so everywhere I go, I keep meeting Drumvelo people that are telling me horrible things. And because Drumvelo's... Um, School is one of the many schools that has been vacuumed into this hive of information, which um, the CEO has bought almost everything. And if he hasn't, they're in trouble. They've got to sell or their event is going to, who knows, things probably won't go right, like the UFO Congress. Things 
things really didn't go right. And I don't know if it's connected, but I knew he couldn't buy it yet or didn't that I know of. But all of a sudden, all these people got really sick with flu-like symptoms and a few people died. This was only a few months after I got hit with a directed energy weapon um, and I hit the floor at the airport and couldn't walk. And I was in a wheelchair and it was a horrible experience to be the uh, effect of somebody that uh, as evil as whoever must have hit me with a small device that is invisible as it comes at you. But I got hit hard. And I am unforgiving because I'm still limping a year later. It's not okay to allow yourself uh, to carry weapons like this because there's no law yet, because people don't know. But I think that by the end of this show, it's going to be stunning what is being used at these events on a lot of innocent people. And I've talked to at least 35 people that were hit at UFO events in the last two years. Laura's been hit how many times, Laura? Ten? Mute. You're muted. <laughs> uh, so I'm unmuted. <laughs> you can hear me. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, it gets yes. definitely very challenging. Uh, it's very much a nervous system thing. It very much affects my heart a lot of the time. Now that I'm with my partner, it seems I'm a little bit more shielded or I feel a little bit more buffered than I was in the past, but I've gone to the ER quite a number of times. A lot of my personal relationships were getting targeted. So a lot of the stuff I experienced actually goes through individuals that I end up getting close with. And they've been aware of it. We've gotten readings and tried to, you know, work on some of this stuff. Um, fortunately, that's not happening uh, now, which, which is, you know, really good. But it is. We, we are winning this war. I mean, this is what they do. They infiltrate the things that are the most threatening. Uh, we've seen this throughout history the silencing of information, the Templars being wiped out, the Essenes, you know, the law of one material, uh, and, and the truth about uh, the Christ Sophia, which is the big target. If we look at the word Gaia, you know, and, and it's being run by these dark forces, when we're on a planetary consciousness, goddess energy called Gaia, and, uh, and the thing is, you, you can't get away with this kind of stuff, and nothing is going to stop full disclosure. And Corey and David are very much wanting to protect that. They want the full disclosure. They want to get as far away from that as possible from what I've come to understand. And there is a massive sabotaging uh, underway of everything that comes out of that uh, group, that, that uh, Gaia. So everybody's got to really watch out for it because that's, uh, you know, there's just a lot of people that really don't know the backstory, really aren't doing the research, that need to watch this kind of video so that they don't give their power away to something that is based in reversals. I mean, these, the satanic energy is all reverse current energy in order to feed on the collective so that they have the power. And uh, so, you know, we're doing something good to help protect people from falling into that trap. And I can safely say that David and Corey really don't have anything to do with that trap at all. And um, I feel good about wh what their position is. But at the same time, I mean, we all have to just be sovereign and hold our discernment. Um, even though I'm, you know, chummy with everybody, I, uh, I represent myself, but I, I'm a, I do readings every day. I can, I can feel integrity. I can feel sincerity. And I don't think that they would support my work or give a crap about my work if they were on the dark side, because the one thing that you notice with Luciferian type energy is it's misogynist. It feeds off false light um, and it's harmful. And that's what they witnessed. And I'm not getting that from the community as, as these are my friends and colleagues at all. I, I get the opposite. Um, that there's, you know, real integrity and sincerity. And, and that's all you can really, you know, go gauge things on at, at this time. And I know that the truth will come out regardless of what it is. And I have a lot of faith in that. And that's why they all love you. And here, with all I've been through, I've only had a few people remind me, has anybody come forward like David or Corey and given a crap about you and told Gaia to, oh, Gaia, oops. Oh, that's what David told me. That was his big bomb that stuck with me. I gave him the drum below $3 million thing, and that was his big, what, how'd you hear that? His big one for me was I said, David, why did they change their name? 
And he said, their branding lady said, gay I am is bad for your reputation. Now, this is December 2015, before we knew all of this other horrific stuff that may or may not be going on. But I looked at David Wilcock and I said, do not lie to my face. Come on, we've been here six hours already. Why would you say something that stupid? Come on. They didn't change it because of gay I am. And he just looked straight at me and he goes, yeah, they did. So to me, that's an interesting detail when these very interesting hue-like gem drops call Jay straight out a closet S and M gay. And Jay has been the only one, Jay Widener, I don't even remember meeting him, but I, he told me on one of these dirty drops that he wrote on YouTube, Alfred likes physical evidence. Here's physical evidence of Jay Widener on YouTube making a comment on a show I did with Randy Moggins. And what was interesting about this particular show was that before the show, Randy said something happened and he had the worst panic attack of his life two hours before we started recording. And he said, this has only happened to me once when I got hit with a directed energy weapon and this is the second time. And he said it was so bad. I almost didn't know if we could do the show. And Randy will say, yes, it's true, it did happen. So we did the show and after the show, he asked me to stay on and talk to him. And while we were talking, he took off his headset and there was blood coming out of his ear. After that show, people wrote amazing comments except one man named Jay Widener. And what we were doing was talking about the treatment at Gaim. And what was this? What year? I don't even remember. Two years ago? Three years ago? But Jay Widener redundantly wrote, after Randy got hit with a terrible energy weapon and bled out his ear, which is really not okay, he wrote to the public as a representative of Gaia TV this, poor Batty Patty. Not only does she make terrible films, this is my exclusive rights distributor of four movies that won six prestigious awards, three EVs at the International UFO Congress. Poor Batty Patty, not only does she make terrible films, but she's a lousy business person. If she spent $30,000 per film, then you got screwed. It went from she to you got screwed. If you tell insane shit about a company you are dealing with, then I think they have the right to shut you up. This is on YouTube. Jay Widener wrote, if you tell insane shit, that is such a mature way to say it, about a company you are dealing with, then I think they have the right to shut you up. You have to tell the truth, Batty Patty. You can't just make shit up like you are doing. Everyone, I am warning you to have nothing to do with Batty Patty. She will say anything, apparently. Physical evidence, screenshot from YouTube of the classy J. Widener, my exclusive rights distributors. So the hacking has been relentless for years. And when um, all of a sudden one day I saw on my YouTube wall that somebody had put this link with a big Gaia logo and I'm like, get that off my wall. Wait a minute, what does it say? Cancel your subscription with Gaia? What is this? So I tapped the link and it took me to a website which was change.org, cancel your subscription, something like that. And it was there for, when I went and looked at it, and as soon as I copied and posted it, boom, it disappeared. Somebody took it down. It was gone. But whoever Jam is, they popped it back up with the new link. And so this thing called cancel your, Gaia, cancel your subscription um, started coming back. And then they put it on one of my YouTube shows. And I went, huh. So I was curious, like, you know. So I read about it, luckily, before they deleted the site. And what they said it was, Gem, G-E-M, is the Gaia employee movement. Now, I personally don't know employees that work at Gaia, but I do know most of these stars, not like Laura. Laura is still chummy. 
I think because I'm a documentarian, um, maybe they figured I was looking too much and Laura's far kinder. I'm just going to say it. You're just so much nicer. Um, whereas I'm always like detective Patty and I've got a camera hanging on my cleavage. I'm just like, you know, you don't want to say anything wrong because even though I look like I might be giggly, I'm taking C60 purple power and I remember everything. So, you know, it's like, I just, uh, you don't want to be doing this to me, what these people were doing. So here I am now and I copied and pasted it after I read the website. And then they suggested that you go to something else that's easy to find, which is called glassdoor.com reviews. And the glassdoor.com is a website where you can review any company that you work for. And so there's 25 reviews on Gaia. And oh my God, I mean, the titles alone are enough to make your skin crawl. Uh, here's one favorite one Into Spiritual and Mental BDSM. Look no further. This is the place to work for people into sadomasochism of the mind, body, and spirit. Not only has the upper management team, I mean, the employees are exploding with very scary stuff about a company where they all have been forced to sign a non-disclosure agreement when they started working there, and everybody walking in is starry-eyed. Oh, wow, I get to be around all these TV stars. TV, my butt. It's some little TV show on the internet among so many, but people are like starstruck and they don't realize when they sign an NDA what a good idea that wasn't. And once you sign an NDA, you cannot talk about them or what they're doing. And I think you've got an entire group of employees right now going from Glassdoor, help, help, but they can't say it out loud because they've got a friggin' band aid across their face and of all people for them to continue screwing six and a half years, I live in Boulder and I know all the great people here and some of them actually didn't realize what was going on there and told me stories. I know way too much about their healing center and it's creepy as could be. So creepy. And now that I know they have this healing center with doctors doing strange things, the employee movement has one real problem, which was a lot of them under gag order were told to strip naked in the healing center by the acupuncturist so that he could see their spiritual energy. And so they took their clothes off going, really, at 50, I'm doing this? And at 30, I'm doing this? And they're taking their clothes off. Now, I know the women that did this. And all of a sudden, they started talking and they went, Wait a minute, you don't need to be naked to see spiritual energy if you're truly a healer. Oh my God, you did that too? And then it started getting around. And then it turns out that the guy, the doctor, the acupuncturist goes to Thailand pretty regularly for weeks at a time. And he's really inappropriate. That's all I'm going to say. I know horrible things about him. And of all things, I just lost a really close friend of cancer. I shouldn't say a close friend, but a relative who said, oh, thank God, I've got this guru helping me get through the end. And it was the, the pedo doc, this guy that was in the back room at Gaim, getting people to strip and turn slowly. That's the creepy part, turn slowly. So I don't even want to guess that there may have been a camera in the wall. Oops. I mean, I don't know. But why all this if you can't get people to sign a gag order? There's a good one to say to a 30, 40, or 50-year-old woman. Really? Well, look what I, I don't know. I'm just throwing out the possibility. But the upset nature of these employees that can't talk because they have a gag order? Oh, no, they're talking. But all of them on Glassdoor.com are saying there's cameras in every corner. There's microphones everywhere. We're being watched and listened to everywhere and an NDA. Now that's a sign of a company that really feels good about their staff, treats them well, and is super loving. Why would Jem show up? Why would these people be screaming, Hulk! from behind a glass door? 
Well, guess what? Thank God somebody was looking. And it's whoever it is called Jem, all of a sudden took it forward, got brave, and started writing these letters to the public. And that's why it's good <clears throat> that, I mean, this is how we can support them and help bust this thing down. I mean, it's really important. And I'm chummy with people until I have evidence of things that are what I would say are sick or uh, completely out of integrity or corrupt. Um, as friendly as I am, I just give people the benefit of the doubt until, you know, there's enough evidence to say, okay, something's way off here, like Jay, um, in that letter. So I wouldn't say that I'm going to be very chummy in that regard, but you know, at the same time, it's like, gosh, how are these souls going to heal? I mean, and, and w w when there's an ego element to it, it's, it's, it's very difficult to bring it back down into humbleness and, 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 and to work with it. And I, you know, I'm not here to want to smear anybody, but you, you know, held the evidence of being pretty bashed publicly uh, and discredited and belittled, even though that doesn't work on a powerful woman like you. I mean, that it's right there. Uh, and I have your back. So I can't be chummy with that kind of thing. Um, everybody else so far so good. And I'm pretty impressed with what I've seen. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. So we really want to support the Gaia team, the, uh, ones that are really screaming out and wanting to be heard. And hopefully this will start to, uh, dismantle the foundation and, and, and help, you know, these individuals move on and, and, and get their life back. Cause I mean, this is just absolute. Uh, controlled disclosure disclosure within the disclosure movement that's happening and once we bust all this stuff down and we move into some of these future scenarios where we're it's more done on our own terms no censorship you know freedom of you know really just sharing who we are and what we're all about nobody needs that we, we don't need that at all we don't need our governments to disclose anything either we have each other so uh there's a lot of <clears throat> really exciting things there's uh uh, Above Majestic is going to be coming out, and a lot of exciting things are going to take place in this field now that we're starting to yank out the, the weed, the, 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 the bad seed that uh, really just wanted to steer this into an artificial, manipulated timeline. So, I mean, this is huge. This is really huge. I'm glad to be a part of it. Because <clears throat> you can sense that stuff going on, but without the evidence, you're just having a weird, creepy vibe. <laughs> you just don't know what it is. And uh, now it's all coming out and, and it's separating the wheat from the shaft or whatever that whole thing is. Um, and I think we're going to see, you know, people really rise in, in a positive way and, and those that really need to be called out and busted. I mean, we have the forces of the universe and, and nature on our side. The mother energy has returned to the planetary body grounded in the physical earth core. There's no way you can dupe that. Um, but it's going to take all of us being true to it and in alignment with it, acting as conduits of this ascension energy, knowing that, you know, we can do this without having to sign anything that's going to uh, be an issue. So we're just going to help get everything clear and full disclosure and have everything on track and and there's no stopping it. And that's why videos like this are incredibly important because uh, a lot of people wouldn't know the difference. Um, it's very easy to just get that starstruckness or just get so excited about ETs and things that are uh, not topics you learn about in school to the point where it can blind a person to what truth is. And so it's really important and I'm grateful we can all hold the truth frequency um, with humility and receptivity and creativity and action. That's what it's going to take. And all of us, the more we can come together and just be open to having a dialogue without having to knock each other over to see who's right, who's wrong. I mean, this is where I feel the unity in our disclosure community. And, and I just think it's such a great example. So I just hope people will find themselves a little bit more gravitating towards it because, um, you know, I look at it like it's the global immune system when we come together in unity and love and respect and everything that does not belong, that is a parasite or you know, something that creates global disease um, is going to get perched out and all the memes they try and threaten us with, those are going to dissolve too. I hope so. And uh, it's interesting that you would say that because I look at Gaim as a herpes that has yeah. destroyed the community. 
And once you get it on the bottom of your shoe, it's really hard to get off. And that's an ugly statement to come out of a, a mouth of a woman, but I've never seen anything as dirty as what I'm watching now. And once we started opening this door and um, talking about it, the letters that have come to me have been insurmountable. You want to talk about evidence? I, I get five letters a day and they're all, you can't even see the bottom and top of my hands. They're all really long because everybody's going, oh my God, rip, let me tell you what happened. It, you know, and I'm hearing these stories that are, um, difficult to hear sometimes but i've never had a bad one that made me nauseous until today um, about this group and i only listen to firsthand don't tell me what your friend tell your friend to call me tell your friend to write me and then i will call him but i'm not going to send alfred anything or laura anything or any of my other circle of journalists until i have vetted it but I do post a lot on uh, you on Facebook that I just copy. I mean, it's like some things, who knows, you know? But when it comes to stuff this serious that's in my neighborhood, I'm taking it real seriously now that we know there's far worse stuff going on. So I want to get into these drops because um, I'm about to drop something that none of you guys know, which is that the GEM team, whoever they are, and I still don't know who it is that's contacting someone and giving them all this data. Uh, that someone is me, Patty Greer. Because whoever they are, they know I've been through unbelievable hell. And they know that this is the company hacking my work all these years. And um, they also know that I am a monster detective and a documentarian, and I don't lie. So whoever it is, I don't know. But I got a good 50 letters, maybe 100, and I do have them uh, on a couple of flash drives, thumb drives that I've given people. And finally, now I'm going to make a, a copy of all the interactions for the media, and that will be dropping on our show with Alfred tomorrow. And uh, you will see these drops, these letters that came to me, and much like uh, Q, They've got that cryptic little thing, but don't waste your time talking about Q. Listen to the damn words. Listen to what the information is saying because every time I posted anything, and I have, I've shared, they said drop this Tuesday, and I was like, okay, I, I, I'm not putting anything out to the public until you prove you're on the inside. I want to know who's hacking me, what evidence you have, and boom, whoever they were, they came right back. And this is what they said about who is hacking me. CEO has non-Gaia spooks hack. Not from building. Many non-FDA toys. They do play with CERN. This is documented. Plugging in mind control tech from CERN. This is from JAM. This is from somebody on the inside. Plugging in mind control tech from CERN. Contact. Interview. Major info, expose, ready to spill all. And I'm like, oh my God, come on. And so I wrote back and I said, how is Jay Widener involved? And they immediately wrote back, whoever it was, JW, not involved, not directly, only trolling you, reporting to CEO. CEO follows up with spooks. JW is reason, behavior along with CEO, brought Jem together. Harassment, bully, hates women, hashtag me too, sick, Jem. And then they wrote me again with a little addition about the um, CIA assets that are his spooks. Kind of creeped me out. And then I woke up the next morning and it started on the 4th of July and it went all day long. And every time I responded, bang, they hit me with another one. And then I responded, and they hit me with another one. And I'm like, uh, this is really heavy stuff. And, you know, I mean, I agree. This company is doing horrific things to everybody's work and vacuuming up all the mystery schools and stealing. I'm not stealing. They're paying for it. But everything's disappearing. It's consciousness and being turned into what they want it to be. And... You know, it's all of a sudden, 
not okay anymore. And that's what's really amazing here. So this group then writes, we know all. We are on the inside. CEO and JW, J. Widener, bragged, call you names, me, ridicule, all caps, say they made you offer, sign NDA, stop bashing Gaia, get your videos back. True, false, when all comes out, you will agree. Don't have to like RM to agree, Regina. All will be revealed. The time has come. Article movement good. Should organize all gem into linear, organized, concise, this is you, Alfred, video, images, rich media, all gem posts from YouTube, all gem posts from Facebook, full research article. Who can you trust? Who do you know? Article will change many minds, many hearts, voting with our wallets. WDYT, what do you think? Gem. So now this is the 4th of July. I'm like, nothing else matters. Who the hell is writing to me? I'm like, come on, talk to me. And they said, email only. So it's, it's gone on like this. But then they continued, loves to bash you, hates women, many tales at Gaia, misogynistic, hates women, closet S&M gay, we're still on Jay Widener, internet history sickening, Gaia women despise. We are Gaia, one high up, witness much, made to do much, lives destroyed, all over CEO ego, hates women, no longer willing, risking everything, not a game, gem. And then the link, www.change.org slash P slash please cancel your Gaia subscription. So they did a slash P slash in front of so that they could bring their thing back. And, and then the next day was alert, security alert, drop it now. And I was like, drop what? And then they kept sending these drops of really cryptic, horrible things about the owners. But the next day it was execs circling the wagons. Gem in danger. Self-preservation mode. Panic. Taking steps. Must expose hashtag gem. Closing in. One possibly compromised. All caps. Danger is real. Don't want David's letter public. Few had access. Handful of suspects. High ranking. Access. Required for gem not to release. Received. Ignored. Denied. David Wilcock letter equals change. Change coming. CEO equals Gaia. And it just goes on and on and on. And we're going to post the whole pile of all this. And I'm going to get it out the door to all of you um, shortly so that no matter what, somebody's going to drop it. And when you read through all of this, you'll be stunned that whoever it was didn't even tell me, other than the very first letter, that the major talent is leaving. And in a private one, they said that Corey had already resigned two weeks ago. And what was interesting was one of these many people that wrote me letters has gone into the courts to file charges because she sent emails with all of these stories that were unfortunately posted in Cosmic Disclosure. Uh, boom, she sent them, and a few weeks later, they used them in a show, and so she's filed charges. But when she sent the court delivery messenger to Gaia last week or two weeks ago, um, they said Corey no longer worked there. So it's like, ah, why do I have to hear all this? Everything is coming to the surface to be healed. But then uh, when they dropped the David letter, that was it. And the public is wasting all this time on, well, David's this and David's that and David's this and Corey's that and Corey's this. And, you know, and everybody's going into the drama of I do believe, I don't believe, when meanwhile, we need to let all that go and look at what's really going on. You've got two main players screaming, help me. Now, I'm not saying I pity David and Corey, and I'm not saying I've listened to one of their shows more than six minutes because I haven't. I don't have a judgment about them, but what I know is they're both screaming for our help. 
and they're living in a really scary situation as are all these employees. And if you look at Glassdoor and you see how many of them have rode cameras everywhere, microphones everywhere, and this place is really creepy, um, there's no question. I mean, we got to fix this. And the only way we're going to do it is for everyone to step up and say, this is my experience, me, I, this happened to me. Not third hand, not gossip. But when all of us listening to all these different talks can stop pointing fingers about who's right and who's wrong and look at what the overall message is, we've got this beautiful earth, this mother Gaia. That's the first time I've said her name. I can't even say it because they just pooped on it. And they've destroyed the most beautiful sacred name of our mother. And they've gone out of their way to disrespect women. And now in these gem drops, I mean, it just goes on and on about Jay and the CEO hating women. The word constantly is hate. And when we go deeper into... Um, what David is complaining about, and then we get into these sex cult rituals, this is seriously scary stuff. Well, it's a total attack on the organic ascension timeline because you can't, there can be no ascension if we don't come together in balance and harmony and we heal the rift between the sexes. I mean, anybody who's promoting any sort of misogynist attitude is wanting to be a ruler and they're totally carrying an archonic energy and you know the ritualistic stuff is just it's all sick and i can i can say that Corey and david have nothing to do with that world and they they respect you too so well i can handle a lot but today was the worst story i've ever been told about this group now I can't say it's absolutely true that what they saw is what they know it was because they've done a ton of research. But what I will say is um, because we're going to take all these numerous pages of unreal stuff written by these sickos, um, written about them, um, I think it's going to be very convincing that we all need a new place to plant our seed. We've lost an awful lot of consciousness and the people that did say yes and that have been in those buildings a number of times, I think perhaps are dealing with some of the directed energy weapons right there at home because that's where they're coming from, I think. And the machine that's in their back room is um, perhaps not a friend of ours. The varieties of stories I've heard now are really alarming because the owner had been bragging to a variety of different people about his new invention that he's working on with um, CERN scientists. And he's calling it the Little Black Gaia Box. And everybody that said they heard it from him directly said he was bragging like it was a good thing. And they're gonna gift it to all their members and it's pretty much um, uh, selective energies in your home that are not operated by you. That's all I'm going to say. It's very, very concerning. And when you add all these pieces together, it's something where we all really need to get on target together and everybody needs to stand up and say, this happened to me. I'm ripping off my gag order because I don't want to be going through this anymore. And I think that's what David did with his letter. And even though it looked like a really long letter to the owner, I, I think he meant for the world to help him because he has developed enough love of lots of people for people to stand up. And I think it's also, um, what did they call it? Like to guarantee, you know, it's kind of like one of those guarantees his fate if he said it publicly. And I have too. I mean, this is my um, public comment. I have no enemies on earth except these guys, whoever they are, why ever they're hating my films, but I think that all of a sudden, now that I'm listening to a lot of this Drumvelo stuff and these Drumvelo teachers, which I've spoken with many, many, I even went to Seattle and met a Drumvelo teacher. It's like, leave me alone. I don't want to know. Okay, so what do you know? <laughs>
I mean, I'm horrible. It's like I have too many pieces not to finally put the final little thing in. And this guy told me stuff. And But this morning was the worst. This morning I learned that a house I've been in in Boulder, Colorado, right up at 4th and Spruce. It's right in there tucked away, West Boulder, 4th and Spruce, where the um, guru... Um, one of those big gurus that wore the orange things and the Rudraksha seeds around his neck, um, Maharaji. He was in Boulder in the 70s, and he was very big, and he had this groovy house on the creek in Boulder, and uh, he died mysteriously. And all of a sudden now I find that the owner of the CEO has this house. And when a lot of famous speakers come to Boulder, they get to stay at that house. So now I learned that they let speakers stay there, and uh, they also have meetings there. So some of these speakers that uh, were invited to come to the house, it's a lovely house. Um, when you walk in, you have to take your shoes off and put them in a little shoe shelf. And, you know, I do that at my house too. So it had three shelves, and the first two shelves were shoes. And you put your shoes in there. There's one empty one for the guests. But on the top, these people said were four children's white masks completely inappropriate children nowhere nobody has kids that lives there that they knew of and the two uh people that told me this story had already done the research on a horrific form of child abuse that includes children's white masks that look exactly like this I've never heard this story. I don't know if it really has to do with what's going on here in Boulder, but they definitely were alarmed. And um, they, when they explained to me what it is, um, it's a satanic practice that I had never heard of. But it is the top louche gathering, adrenochrome, whatever it is, the really inspired blood that the most horrific people like to drink. But what this person said, the white masks for children are for older kids, and they peel the skin off their face, put the mask on, while another member is hurting them from behind sexually. And the child is still alive, and that's where they get the best. I mean, it made me so sick. And the fact the man was adamant that he and his wife knew exactly what it was when he saw them. And I said, well, then what it appears to me as, even though I'm like ready to get sick to my stomach, is if there's all these different people coming into the house and they put out something like that, only a few will recognize it. And then what is that, an invitation? Or was that just a coincidence? I don't know, but they didn't feel like it was a coincidence at all. They felt that it was uh, a message about something going on there that makes me feel very, very uncomfortable. So when we add, you know, that with the glass door review that says this is the perfect place to work for people into sadomasochism of the mind, body, and spirit, and it just goes on and on, this is a real serious problem, and you've got the top guy, David Wilcock, yelling to the public, freaking help me. That's what I hear. I don't hear blah, 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 paragraph, paragraph, and I hear the employees doing the same thing. I am a, a, a maternal human, like Laura is. We are sickening compassionate to be in a field this filthy with people this disgusting. But the thing is, I've already been hit. I've already had all my money stolen by them. Now, luckily, I have a different business, so I don't care. But I do care about getting hit with weapons and watching innocent people get hit. I do care about watching the speakers that are like, oh, I'm going in and doing another show. And then they come out and I've got like a blinking eye. I mean, it's like I'm seeing stuff that shouldn't be going on. And I am not going, gee, maybe. I'm still limping. And that's not a maybe. And that doesn't make me happy every day. So they're really stupid to have hit my website today with some Swedish fraud. And PayPal yesterday sent me some phony thing. Amazon's got all of a sudden all the, I mean, give me a freaking break, you little spooks.
Really? I mean, the more you do, the more exposed you're going to be. So that's what this show is for me. I'm just done. We're not dealing with people. We're dealing with bullies. And we're out of high school. This stuff is over. And the women and a few great men in journalism are rising and saying, that's it. Everybody come forward. Rip the thing off your mouth and tell the truth. Because it's the only way we're going to change the paradigm. Yep. This is disclosure. Full on. I mean, there's many, many layers to it. And this was such an ultimate deception that could have steered things in a really dangerous direction. And just so grateful that the management, uh, the employee movement spoke up. I mean, I can't imagine them not being able to. Um, the energy is getting really amplified in this, you know, ascension window that we're still in. And uh, I, I don't see why they can't all just emerge and change these kind of agreements, especially now that it's public, now that we know. Um, I'm not scared of these guys. And, you know, we know that we're here on earth to take this kind of crap down. So whatever it takes, it's gonna happen. Great. Amen. Um, tell me, Patty, uh, uh, we're, we're just at about the 60 minute mark now. And, um, uh, does that pretty much cover what you wanted to talk about in this introductory part one, or are there other materials? Because if not, I, I, I'd like to ask both of you just a few questions that I'm sure are in the minds of the people watching and the people that will be watching this on social media and elsewhere and asking the same questions. Ready. Okay. The first question is this, and it's really to both Laura and to Patty. And that is that um, earlier today, I watched about a 25 minute video by a, um, a student teacher of Drumvelo Mel Melchizedek. And he, he said a phrase that I thought was remarkable when when he first got the call from Gaia which he thought was in good faith he's you know very much sort of an innocent person and approaches uh, the world in a very positive way and he said oh we starseeds know that in 2012 the timeline has changed and it's now changed toward the divine feminine so that Gaia put out a call for help and we came to assist in this work. And so in the mode of reframing the word Gaia, which I think is kind of the double entendre that we've been watching throughout this whole program, or at least I know that I have, could you talk to how we can take Gaia.com that has been trampled and just sort of let go of that deconstruction that was so d dishonored and now allow Gaia, the larger living Mother Earth, to speak in this issue? Uh, Laura, do you want to start? Uh, let, let, oh, yeah. That's so wonderfully put, Alfred. I'm just, it's so wonderful to hear the way that you worded that because we are getting that name back. I mean, the first AI robot or one of the main AI robots is called Sophia. Then we've got the ISIS terrorism thing. And then we got Gaia run by this organization. And it's a it's complete sabotage of that vibrational energy, um, you know, really bent on harnessing and siphoning life force and, and people's hopes and, and, and visions about uh, you know, disclosure, which is a huge part of ascension. So, I mean, just really connecting into the earth, allowing yourself to really feel into the messages that are coming through is going to be, you know, really important. Supporting one another in the platforms that we create, 
you know, we're not all sitting on loads of money, but we want to create things. We want to be visible. We want to bring together communities, but we're not going to necessarily have the kind of resources that somebody like that has because they work the energy in a really dark and sick way in order to be in that level of power and try and maintain that power. And, and this is huge that that's been broken down now and it's been completely and totally weakened. So I see just a massive empowerment, us being more resourceful, more being in abundant consciousness, figuring out ways to um, just help rehabilitate the trauma that humanity's feeling, number one, because of all the thousands of years of dark history, but also these sort of betrayals. You know, it's like people have opened their minds up to information that is so unusual for anybody to be able to embrace, and then they're deceptive too. I mean, it's people don't know where to turn, and, and, and it can create just a massive feeling of, wow, it was hard enough to have their own foundation crumbled to get in touch with things that are beyond the reality that we uh, were raised in. And then, yeah, another betrayal. Uh, and it's very scary to think that there's nowhere you can turn. And I just see us and other individuals like ourselves that are really holding space. I just want people to just know that you're being held and supported. Um, I do sessions every day. Uh, I can help with you know, the astro charts and just help you to get a little bit more clear about your map so you can begin to liberate from some of these um, control forces so you can really find yourself in your avatar consciousness. And I'm just you know, incredibly grateful because just to hear it coming out of Alfred's mouth the way he did just right there between Patty and I just saying it's, it's really about Gaia, the real Gaia, the real ascension. This was a complete and total overlay and, and absolute manipulation and coming from a misogynistic perspective when it is about the divine feminine, coming into balance with the masculine, healing these wounds, you know, not wishing to take over, but really wishing for this massive healing. And, and I just feel like we're really setting that energy in these um, interviews. And I really look forward to what comes out tomorrow. So um, yeah, just know that you're not alone. And even though there's betrayal over here, you know, you're going to start to feel into recognizing integrity and truth when you can really tap into your own div divinity and the consciousness that's available to you to really transform in these times. And allow yourself to really connect with your intuition and with the earth so that your BS meter is a little bit stronger. And uh, yeah, and I know that there's a lot of us that you can count on. And uh, my, it's my dedication. I'm not perfect, but all, all of our hearts are in the right place. And that's for sure. Patty, thank you, Laura. It's a great, thank you, Laura. It's a great team to be on. And it's a great time to be here to change history. And um, I do think that, you know, anonymous was the beginning because we still don't know who it was other than I introduced this guy on one of my info whore shows who began anonymous. And, you know, they stopped the view counts at, I don't know, 1100 or something because they're jacking all the view counts on YouTube. And it's such a game now where, I don't care to win. I mean, years ago, I was really bothered. So as people write comments on our YouTube shows, I remember before I used to always say, I'm not married to Stephen Greer. I never was. And I'm not his sister. And he's not my grandfather. So let's get that over with. No, I'm not with Stephen. And I don't hate men. I live with a wonderful man. And I love you guys. You're great. But I don't resonate with people who aren't honest. It's just always been my way. And because I'm one of those people who actually watches you when you speak and actually listens to the words, I don't miss much. And I think Laura is the same, and so are you. And it's why the three of us are, are journalists and speakers, because this matters to us, changing the paradigm. And I want to really remind people, as you watch these words come on the camera and you watch the information, don't distract yourself by thinking it's about David. It's not about David. It's about David crying, friggin' help me, I'm stuck. These are, these are Luciferian monsters, I'm stuck. You guys help me, I've got glue on my feet. It's super glue, help me. And I'm not a fan, but I'm a human. And I'm hearing the guy crying for help like the employees. So as, a goddess and a woman and a good human like the, 
all of us are, so many listening too, what we need to do is hear their cry and do something about it. What can we do? Stand up and tell your story. Tell the truth. Support the people that do and stop wasting time when these things go public, which is going to go far and wide. Do not waste your time like everybody else going, oh, it's like Q. So what? Read the words. Read between the line and stop being distracted by the cue this, cue that. I know it looks like cue, but the words are really important because cue didn't say things like, um, <laughs> let me just give you a little nice taster to go. Okay, here's the last one, right? Should we do this to end the show just to get people hungry for tomorrow? Thursday drop. Execs circling, self-preservation mode, panic. Taking steps, must expose, hashtag gem. Closing in, one possibly compromised, danger is real. Don't want David Wilcock letter public. Few had access, I read half of this before, but not the rest. High ranking, access, required for gem not to release. Received, ignored, denied. David Wilcock letter equals change. Change coming, change equals CEO. CEO equals Gaia. Remove CEO. Gaia equals new company. Coworkers worth saving. Coworkers equal light workers. Light workers equal no fight. 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 Corey Good fought CEO. CEO said, fuck you, Corey. CEO angry. Remove Corey from CD. Uh, uh, cosmic disclosure. Corey is CD. Litigation next. DW. David. It's initials. David, Corey, Emery, our disclosure. CEO, insert LARPers. CEO to discredit Corey. CEO to discredit Emery. After CEO info completed, CEO equals insert others. Others equal control of disclosure. Deep state op. Steel, Emery, Corey, testimonies. Emery, Corey fought CEO. Explosive meetings. CEO makes agreements. CEO broke agreements to all of them. Lies, lies, lies. It just goes on and on. And the bottom is, oh, God. CEO equals must control disclosure. CEO equals must control community. CIA op, Denver Luciferian cover. Coven equals CIA front. Deep state censorship of disclosure. Confirmed. Employees. Talent. Kept as slaves, unaware. Gaia, CEO makes millions from David. Corey, Emery, made uh, reliant on CEO. Endless, endless people crying out saying, help us. Yeah, and that's why it's really important that's what I hear. to have their back and, and understand that this is a, a big piece of evidence about where their position was within that community, within Gaia. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of smearing and misunderstanding going on. And uh, I just really think they, they need our support. And they've, they've offered a lot. Um, they offer a lot to the world. And, uh, yeah. So I just hope people can just kind of calm down a little and look towards all this great stuff we have to look forward to. And the stuff that doesn't belong, that isn't holding a high vibration of truth and integrity is not going to make it. And they're going to all be exposed. So I, I still think discernment and just being sovereign is important. But until we, um, I mean, as long as we're, we're seeing good indications and, and people are showing up um, in, in truth and good intent, they deserve to have our back. They deserve to have our support. And I hope we get to know who these gem people are and we can pull them out of this. And, um, and I just want to just offer my support to everybody that has been mistreated within this community. And, um, and just the truth will prevail no matter what. It's just, it's all there is to it. Thank you, Laura. Um, okay, I have one more detail question, kind of a due diligence question. And it's just because those of us who are really getting into the details of this and learning a new, a new reality here, um, is the GEM uh, Gaia employees movement, is the GEM that is 
writing you in your opinion? And this is just a question. I, I don't know the answer. Um, is this an individual? Oh, no, no, wait. Let me finish the question before you jump in with an answer, please. I, I, it's, it's a nuanced question with different parts. Thank you for your consideration of this humble journalist. Um, is this individual who's writing you, is he a person who is writing you as an individual getting the word out about what he imagines is going on? Or is it an individual who is sort of a delegate of an organized employee movement within Gaia, in your opinion? Thank you. Um, Patty and Laura, if you want to answer or have any information. I wish I knew, but I would definitely say it's somebody on the inside that knows, that worked closely with Jay and Jerka, the CEO. And so it's, it is somebody on the inside because they said way too many things that I've heard before. And when I wrote them, they always wrote back immediately. And it sounded like one person always writing me. They never said, I have to check with the team. But the email, uh, they are a team. I could tell it was the person is a part of the team. I, I mean, I don't know. It could be David. Could be David. I don't know. You don't I started know. thinking that today. Like, no, I don't. And right. believe me, I asked. I said, in the beginning, I said, how do I know you're real? Can we talk? And they said, email only. And then it became very cryptic. Okay. In your multidimensional estimation, do you think that you're being played? No. Okay. So you think that this no, is genuine? This is on the level? Oh, the person is at risk and the person is acting in good faith, in good faith on behalf of employees who may or may not know what they're doing, but who do know what they're doing, because this is now, I mean, I've seen some of the letters publicly. Okay. Um, Laura, do you have any opinion on, on that as to whether Jem is an individual acting alone, an individual acting on behalf of the group, and whether we're being played? I'm sensing it's more than one individual. Uh, I think there has to be kind of an agreement. I think it takes a lot for a person to just come forward kind of on their own, but I wouldn't be surprised uh, as, as um, I've had that kind of path and journey when the whistle needs to be blown, it gets blown. Um, I, I'm sensing that it's, you know, probably, you know, a, a, a couple people and I don't think we're being played because I talked to, I've, I've had a few chats with Corey and, uh, and this is all very real what's going on. They don't know who these people are um, from what I've come to understand or what I've kind of um, sort of, you know, figured out. Uh, and that's all I can really say. I don't think we're being played at all. I mean, energetically it feels liberating even though I, I didn't get immersed in Gaia at all. But I, I, I feel the energetic lift in my being. Like there's been something that I've not been able to put my finger on. There's been something I've avoided. There's been something I've picked up at you know, at these events. And so talking to Patty was always very reassuring, like, okay, okay, yes, this, this is all kind of coming together. And she's been talking about this for a while. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me that something is coming up to the surface. And I can't imagine anybody would want to write that many emails and take that kind of time and, and have that kind of intent or energy behind those emails. If it was just to, you know, I, I don't see the benefit of, of compromising a job or a position or um, dragging somebody in who's a warrior when it comes to this sort of thing. So I don't think we're being played. Okay. Now, uh, uh, finally, uh, the, the phrase kept on coming up, David Wilcock is, is asking for our help. There are these cries for help from the employees. As a radio talk show host who in the mid-1980s helped bring unionization 
to WBAI FM in New York when we had a Zionist director who would laugh the Palestinian cause out of the office and and just go out of their way to uh, 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 to make insults against the Palestinian identity. Whereas in fact, the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal of whom I would judge found Israel to be a war criminal for their illegal invasion and occupation of Palestine in 1948. The point of my question is this, there are all sorts of legal r remedies. You can unionize. They just have to call AFTRA. They just have to call all kinds of unions. I, I can tell them I, I did it back in the 1980s. You, you can unionize that shop in a heartbeat, and the management's going to be up against the wall. Secondly, as a war crimes judge, you can call the district attorney in. You can call the, the U.S. attorney in, and you can have the Satanists arrested on Jerker Grisavi from all of these other guys on down in a heartbeat once you start having this kind of physical evidence. Why aren't they doing that? You know, exercise a bit of self-help will help them. So I, and people can say, oh man, that's your generation. You're 76 years old, you're a war crime judge. Yeah, well, I come out of the 60s. You know, I was at Woodstock. I'm from the Vietnam generation. We said no to the war crimes. We took to the streets. So I'm putting it to you, Jim. Unionize. I'm putting it to you, Jim. Call the district attorney. I'm putting it to you, Jim and David Wilcott and Corey Good. Call in the state attorney. You know, show a little backbone. Okay, that's a statement, and that's a question. Please react. Patty and Laura. Hmm. It's very sticky. I think we've got a movement. I think it's all going to, I mean, they're moving on and they're going to be doing some wonderful things. There's a lot to look forward to in this community. Uh, I think that's the most important thing is just to be able to rise above it. And I agree with you, Alfred, um, you know, and you're throwing that intention out there and that seed, you're planting that seed. I think it's a little sticky right now. Um, I, I can't even imagine what's really going on. And I ended up posting the letter, but I took it down because I wanted to talk to David first. Um, but I can sense that everybody's kind of crying out. And I don't think it was an accident that it, it, it became known. Uh, I just wanted to have a conversation first. And so if anybody's listening to it, David or Corey uh, and Emery, that that was in my heart. But at the same time, it was such a powerful letter and I'm just grateful that we all got a chance to see what was really going on behind the scenes. So I can't say I have any regrets. I just don't like to act out of integrity or not have permission, but you know, we're, this is major, you know, and if, if something's crying out for help, how can one not respond um, and have an instinct to want to help and protect? So I know that that's why it ended up becoming what it is as uncomfortable as, as, as it's been for everybody, uh, I think we're gonna see a lot of support for them and we're gonna get Jem to hopefully be more vocal. And uh, yeah, they, they, we, we answered the call that was being cried out. And if anybody's upset about it, you know, we gotta look at the larger picture. This is the kind of thing that cannot be hidden. All these viewers that have been played, all these employees that have been used. Uh, I mean, this is amazing, but Again, where I might have overstepped any boundary, of course I apologize for that, but uh, what, what I see becoming from this, what I see coming and emerging from this is, 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 is so incredibly massive. And we're talking thousands of years of this level of manipulation that has infiltrated all sorts of um, you know, different power structures. And this is the final straw because this was the disclosure one. So. I, I think at the end of the day, we can all just pat ourselves on the back and we've been sort of a spiritual meta, like a multidimensional team, just sort of acting out, you know, from our intuition, from, from our heart, from what we know is needed on this earth. We all hold that intention for the planet. So I think at the end of the day, we'll hopefully be appreciated for it. And if not, what's, what's needed to be done is being done. Patty, do you have any, any comments on my statement? Uh, 
which is really kind of a generational statement to say, hey, look, we guys from the 60s, in the 80s, when we had to deal with the Zionist bosses, we unionized and we brought in the district attorney where, when we had to, and we became war crime judges. So that's an example. So over to you. Yay, Alfred. Well, yay, Alfred, and yay, Laura, and yay, me. We have hung in here through thick and thin. Um, I think what I need to say just as a punchline, and um, war crimes, I mean, all that, this is, yeah, it's definitely that same frequency of doesn't belong on this planet, got to go. You know, as we move into a new paradigm, all these low frequencies of darkness are coming to the surface to be healed. And I think that's what we're seeing now is this huge volcano of the last of it. And um, the punchline that I want to leave us with at the end of this show is that it's not just about getting all the women, such as myself, out of the field by making it so horrible that you know, you throw up your hands. It's not just buying up all the spiritual mystery schools. It's not just convincing all those marvelous speakers that probably came in with great intention that now that you've signed, you are gagged and you're going to do what we tell you or you will never work in this field again is what I've heard many times. You will do what I say or I will destroy you and you will never work in the field again. This is not a friendly situation, but it's not just the schools and the teachers and the speakers, but now it's all those additionally innocent members are lined up ready to get a black box from this company in their own home that may or may not prove to be something related to a directed energy situation that could possibly not be good for your health and this is where i'm concerned that it's not enough to destroy the community but also the audience we're in a really intense time where all of you members and i want to be clear again with this uh what's the word um a disclaimer i never told anyone to cancel their membership i never did i never will and I never did. So if they've lost millions of members, oh, wait a minute, Jem said uh, those numbers are fake anyway from the inside of the corporation. So, you know, all I know is the truth is here and we are the disclosure and we need to stop sitting on our hands and going, oh, David this, David that. No, David needs your help, but it's not help David and give him money. It's he's pointing out that Anybody working over there is in serious shit right now. I can, serious trouble. I can say that it's been very difficult on Corey, Emery, and David to have all this stuff dropped. Um, but that's not to say that this hasn't been, you know, important. Uh, but they don't know who's doing this. So, but again, my position is, wh what? where are we when we're on the other side of it? And I'm thinking it's going to look real good. But this has been really difficult. I do too. Me. Yeah. And I haven't, you know, really, um, I, you know, I, I'm not even sure I, I haven't gotten direct validation from Corey. It's just, you know, obviously he's resigned. Obviously everybody's moving away from it. So that shows the realness of it, but I haven't gotten any like confirming points from him except for the fact that what we saw in the letters, what's kind of going down. Um, not full on confirmations though. It's, hard to you know connect but um yeah i just i support their integrity though well what was interesting was that it was all women that dropped the letter it was laura it was you are free tv and it was sarah westall so hey there gaia you little girl dolls it was women that helped david drop the letter alfred sorry um, well, I discovered in my uh, gender identity support groups at the LGBT uh, support center here in Va Vancouver, I'm not gay, but I went there for gender identity 
awareness and I discovered that I'm a Gemini and one of my inner identities is a gay female. So I've got a straight male and a gay female. See, Gemini is Castor and Pollux, so I call her Castorina and Pollux. So there you go. Now, having said that, <laughs> I know it's a showstopper, right? But I just want to kind of push the envelope into what I'm about to talk about, which is Femina Universalis, and that is the next uh, species that is now emerging on the planet after Homo sapiens. Homo means man in Latin. Femina means woman or mulier. Now, of course, all the New Agers. See, this is we're we're in the same period that when um, Homo sapiens appeared and Neanderthal man went into obsolescence. There was a lot of social disruption on the planet, and now Homo sapiens is disappearing. Guess whose examples of Homo sapiens? I think most of the governments and churches and banks on the planet at the moment would be examples of Homo sapiens institutions, wouldn't you say so? Yep. Patty and Laura, speaking oh, yeah. as the honorary male yeah. on this planet. <laughs> this is my best Homo sapiens yeah. imitation. Do you think I'm doing well? I'm doing very well. Okay. Now, uh, we've now discovered, and in fact, there's a seminar on the emergence of Femina Universalis with Kendra Jonas, who's a great uh, writer and scholar that Laura Eisenhower, uh, we've had the privilege of meeting. And through Kendra, and now uh, through other scholars who've been part of Exo University, I spoke to Andy Bishago, who will be featuring his seminars in the upcoming semester of Omniversity. You've got universe, multiverse, omniverse. You had the university studying the universe, but now we know that there's an omniverse that's multidimensional. So most universities that I approached with this idea shut their doors on me. So we're inventing and developing the omniversity. And we spoke to Laura and we'll be featuring some of her seminars in our initial semester coming up and we'd like to invite you patty uh to present a seminar on uh crop circle science at omniversity in its initial seminar so that's Thank to you. end this program part one until part two tomorrow on a positive note of the new earth emerging as mystery babylon falls which that chronovisor vision known as the book of revelation said would happen in a single hour's time. I'm sorry we went over the hour here, but please join us tomorrow. Now, we'd like to leave you both with the last word. Patty and Laura, please. If you want to know why they're hacking me, go to my website, which is cropcirclefilms.com and stream a movie. And I've got eight films, and they tell the truth about crop circles, UFOs, and plasma. Uh, the most intense one is my final called Crop Circle Diaries, cropcirclefilms with an S.com. Wow. Well, this has been so wonderful. My website's uh, cosmicgaia.org. And you'll see information about the readings that I do. I'm excited to do the uh, lectures and, and more collaborations with both of you. And I look forward to it tomorrow. And uh, I guess I just want to leave on the note of, you know, there's a lot of vagueness still surrounding my part and the communications that I'm getting. But this is uh, something that we don't want to lose sight of as far as those that are choosing to walk away. We, we don't want to lose sight of... Um, what they have to offer the community and, and what they need from us in order to support this transition. And, um, and hopefully we'll, you know, get to know who, who Gem is. We have to be very wary of the fact that there's another organization within Gaia that wants to uh, counteract what Gem is trying to do by 
putting out a lot of false reviews, it looks like. It's kind of what I'm sensing. Um, so, you know, you, a lot of statements have been shared from people that have spoken or, or done interviews on Gaia saying it's great, they love their job, it's been wonderful. So, you know, just hopefully um, we'll get to the bottom of all this. And until then, I think there's enough evidence that we're just going to keep moving forward with this. And yeah, tomorrow's going to be big. So join us. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for having me. Well, thank you. Thank you, Laura Eisenhower. And thank you, Patty Greer. And thank you to Jim, uh, the employees of Gaia.com, a 1988 Colorado corporation, 30% plus owned by Jerka Risavi, a uh, Czechoslovakian operative brought here under CIA communist satanic connections in my humble opinion. Please join us tomorrow for part two of this exciting and revelatory series. I'm Alfred Lamberant Weber with TrueTube. Now at TrueTube.co. Don't go to YouTube. They blocked me enough. Go to TrueTube. Thank you.